your girl, Rachel Starr, and this is episode four on the Rachel Starr Show. And this is all about the one, two, three of anyone looking to level up in sex, love, and personal growth. What I'll be talking about today is Q&A. About a month ago on Instagram, I posted, leave your comments. Um, what do you want to know? This is going to be one of those things that I'll run through. A whole bunch of people had some really great questions and I'll answer them and elaborate them. Sometimes they'll be short answers, sometimes they'll be long answers, but I'll definitely go through those. From episode three, I got a lot of great feedback. Thank you so much for the feedback on the video and the audio. Today I am recording 4K from my iPhone 8, so we'll see how that quality is versus the quality from what I did before. I also am going to be using this for my audio because there was definitely complaints about um, the audio quality. So this is what I'm using today. Hopefully this works out. Please give me your feedback on that. It's a Saramonic Smart Mixer audio and video solution for mobile iPhones. We'll see if this works. <laughs> and then I also invested in a Mevo camera. So this will be really interesting and I think this will also help me not only with the podcast and vlog, but as well as doing like some Facebook Live. Um, if I can figure out how to get back on Periscope since they kicked me off like a couple years ago, maybe three years ago now. But I just got this. I would have used this today, but I didn't realize that it needed five hours to fully charge and I opened the box today. So it's not fully charged yet. So I'm still going to use my iPhone today, but that's cool because again, it lets me figure out if this smart mixer by Saramonic is going to be a good solution with my iPhone. So that's that. Please give me all of your feedback with that and we'll get started. I have Flopper912 asked, would you would love to know what are the next steps you are going to do as an adult movie performer? Well, as of yesterday, Karen Lee um, hit me up with browsers and asked me to film some more scenes probably July end of July August sometime so we're working on doing three scenes for that possibly more on RK I'm still filming I for the past five years have only filmed about 20 movies a year sometimes less sometimes a little bit more but that's kind of the average um, I am still very much in the mix of filming. I don't have any plans of quitting anytime soon. I love my job. You're still going to see new content of me out there. Um, so I hope that answers your question with that. The next one we have Bran Vince 67 wanted to know what my ideal date night was. And I thought that was a very interesting question because number one, most people are going to have that question for anyone across the board. I can tell you I definitely wouldn't want to go to a movie because I want to get to know the person that I'm dating. Like I don't want to sit in a movie and be quiet and you know, um, I'm paying attention to a movie in a movie theater. Um, I think a nice dinner, being doing something that's interesting and fascinating, like a nice dinner is a go-to, right? Have some wine, talk, chill, hopefully a more quiet environment so you're not screaming over loud music. But there's this thing called escape rooms, and I really love them. And I think something like that would be exciting, it would be different. Um, an escape room is basically like this place that you go to, and it's a puzzle, and it has all these clues, and it can be a group of people, it can be two people. I think you have to have at least two or more people. But it can be a group of people, and everybody has these clues, and you have to figure out how all of these clues go together to get you out of this escape room that you're locked into. So you have to figure out the solution um, and work together. I think something like that's really cool. Or doing something super active, you know, like I'm totally open for a first date being, okay, let's go to brunch and then walk our dogs, you know, on Katie Trail. I don't know, like really anything that is just out of the norm, something that's gonna create a good memory for me. I meet so many people that it's really hard for someone to make a significant impression on me just just from the sheer volume of people that I'm meeting. So if you wanna stand out to me, you're gonna have to do something to stand out and make me remember that moment. So 
hopefully that helps. The next one is Dob Dub 1983. And he said, how do women in your line of work plan for the future for when you are at an age where you are not in as much demand? I always thought that it must be stressful. This is very true. I got into the industry when I was 23. I'm now 34, <laughs> coming up on 35. I'm very fortunate that I think I still have a lot of longevity in my industry as far as filming. But that's a very good question. I would say the answer would be to not put all your eggs in one basket. I have three companies, two companies are within this industry. One company has absolutely nothing to do with this industry. I have investment properties. I'm looking to definitely have more of those. I webcam, I, um, I tour, I feature dance. I do as many things as I possibly can. My newest venture is coaching and consulting. So I coach couples or individuals on how to be better lovers. You can find that on my website, therachelstar.com. And I also consult businesses or people, maybe it's an individual looking to break into the business. And so they need more of the business side of things. And I do consulting for that as well. I'm also very much into fitness. Um, there, it's not written down in paper yet, but I am working on a business partnership that would launch me into the fitness sector um, that I'm really, really excited about because I think health and fitness is super important. As y'all know, I work out a lot. My nutrition is very on point and you've got to take care of yourself. And that's something that I can stay in forever, you know, that doesn't really have like a shelf life. Um, as far as girls in the industry, it really is all about your brand of how long that you can last. Um, look at Nina Hartley or Julia Ann. Uh, Lisa Ann just made her comeback, right? So these are women that have been in the industry for a very long time and they're very successful. They have huge names and even still they are filming and can continue to film for many more years after today, right? So it's all about how you brand yourself and I think that I've done that well enough that I have many more years in this business. The next question is one, two, three, four, user one, two, three, four, five. Are you looking for a serious relationship? That's a good question. I definitely would love to be in a serious relationship, although I'm not rushing out to go find one. I think quality over quantity for me is most important. I'm not a serial dater. Definitely not gonna rush into anything really, really fast because we have like intimate chemistry or something. I want to know that we have the same goals, we or similar goals, we have similar values, similar princ principles, similar like blueprint of the world. So I know that it will be a long-term relationship, hopefully, which would be a serious relationship. So yes, I want to be in a serious relationship. I still believe 100% in love. I definitely want to be married one day and I'm a hopeless romantic, so there's that. <laughs> Rob Durance said, have you ever traveled to Canada? The answer to that is yes. And he asked, what place in the world do you want to see most that you have not been? I really would like to see Spain and France. I've only been to Rome and Italy, so I'd like to see Tuscany as well. Um, Spain, I'd like to go to Barcelona. I've never really had a big want to go to Ibiza, um, but I guess if I'm gonna be in Spain, I might as well check out both. <laughs> um, but I really have an interest in France. I love French food. I'd love to go to Paris, partly being a hopeless romantic as well. Um, Tuscany, I wanna go there for all of the wine. Um, Brunello is my favorite wine, which is from Tuscany. And so I think those would be my top places I want to travel to that I haven't been to yet. And he also followed up with, am I into cars or bikes? Have you ever dreamed of having a large collection of cars if you don't already have it or other collectibles? Um, I am into cars, not enough to have a collection of them. I do have two vehicles. 
Um, I have a Porsche 911 4S and I have a Jeep Grand Cherokee as my daily driver. Um, my Porsche, I absolutely love it. It is my very first real sports car. I just don't know if I could ever give it up. I really, really love that car so much. Um, I have a, an appreciation for Ferraris as well. If some of you saw my video when I went to Maui, uh, one of my friends has a Ferrari and we went on a Ferrari trip where a bunch of people that had Ferraris, we shipped them to Maui and went all over the island. It was absolutely spectacular. And that definitely got my engine revved up of maybe I want a Ferrari. And then I came home to my Porsche and I was like, oh, I don't know, I still wanna keep my Porsche. So that's where I'm at with that right now. As far as bikes, I used to be into motorcycles. I had a Gixxer 600, I had a Gixxer 750. Um, I rode for many, many years and due to tragic losses that I had with friends and also a couple of bad wrecks on my part, I decided to retire from being a motorcycle owner, mostly because I don't want to mess up my skin, I don't want to be scarred up, and I do think there's something to nurses and doctors that work in ER that call them organ donors. It's a very fun hobby to have, it's very dangerous, and at this point in my life, I'm not sure I wanna take that risk consistently enough to have my own motorcycle, not to say that I wouldn't get on the back of a motorcycle still, or even ride a motor, drive it myself, but to own one and drive it regularly, probably not. I am probably gonna mess this name up. It is La Pap BBX, and he wanted me to talk about the preparation and hard work that goes into producing a film and said, by the way, big fan of my work. So first of all, thank you for saying that you're a big fan. Um, preparation and the hard work that goes into producing a film. Wow. Holy crap. Where do you start? So first you have to have a location. Uh, then you need a script. Then you need to be able to pick out your talent for that script. Um, you've got to have a photographer. You have to have the director. You've got to have a personal assistant, a PA on set, um, permits, um, make sure that you're filming in a state that it's legal, contracts in place, there's all kinds of things. Um, everyone has to be STD tested, there has to be model releases and 2257s, making sure that you're over 18 years old. There's definitely a lot of preparation. And then just once you're on set, getting the lights set up, getting the pictures taken, getting it edited, and the video filmed, and then that edited, and then marketed properly. Definitely there's a lot that goes into that. Um, I think that's a nice little snippet on that. I could probably go in for hours and have an entire podcast blog on just preparation and hard work that goes into it, but we'll save that for another time. Simon Blakemore one said, what is the most unusual scene I have done? I would definitely say that was for kink.com. I only did maybe two or three of them. It was my first year in the business. I had never done BDSM before or any kind of hardcore fetish stuff and it was a lot. I, They were so sweet. They were so nice. There was definitely a safe word, but I remember thinking I might have bit off more than I could chew. <laughs> So that was definitely the most unusual scenes I had ever done. I had never been flogged before. I had never been tied up and suspended from the ceiling with meat hooks and rope. Um, there was a lot of contraptions that I was put in that just didn't have any idea about. Now I definitely think with the years of experience, I'm a little bit more open to things like that as long as it was on my terms. I'm not so sure I'd wanna be the submissive one but that was the most unusual so far in my 11 plus years. Um, Bill Blood 9277 do you enjoy your work? Absolutely I enjoy my work, it's everything to me, that's why I've been in it for so long. I literally get sad thinking about not being in the industry in any way, so um, yes, I love my work. Um, shout out 93451 said, which scene you prefer, male, male, female, or female, female, male? I prefer girl, girl, guy, so female, female, male. Um, I like the best of both worlds. I want to be with a guy and I want to be with a girl. I have no problem sharing. For me, I don't even know if I'm sharing. I just think I'm kind of being selfish because I want you know, everything that is involved with having a girl and everything that's involved with having a guy too. So definitely female, female, male. DT 
the emperor said what do you do in your free time if you have any free time my free time is very limited but in my free time i do a lot with fitness being in the gym in the summertime i'm always on the lake um, I really love to be at Party Cove, wakeboarding. I love to travel. Beaches are my favorite destinations. I love to cook. I love my dog, Daisy. Come here, Daisy. Come here, baby. Come here. Are you smiling at me? Come here, baby. She's camera shy. But this is my Daisy, and I love taking her for walks on Katy Trail. She's an absolute doll. Um, she's a Katande Tulier. She's six years old, and she's the love of my life. I love her so much. So a lot with her and friends, family, just pretty normal brunch, you know, tennis, sand volleyball, cycling, uh, anything active. Let's see. The next one is Macho SDP. Do you wish to pursue a career choice outside of the adult film industry that you fear may be influenced by your work in the industry? As of yet, no. There's, there's not anything that I'm pursuing outside of adult that I think is going to have a negative influence, if that's what you're meaning. Um, I think so far the brand that I've built within the adult industry is going to help me and be a positive influence in my future ventures. Kaz N. Iner, I'm sorry if I messed that up, said, what is your workout routine to always stay so perfect? Um, I mix it up, honestly. I do weightlifting, I do HIT, I do cardio. Like I said, I play tennis, I, um, I cycle, I do some boxing. I have a bag in my garage that I can box on. Weightlifting, I really, really enjoy. That's definitely my favorite. But I like boot camp stuff like HIT, um, which is high intensity interval training. Um, I think that it's good to change it up. Fahanzo said, If I tickle your feet, will you jump? Super important question. Yes, I absolutely will jump. I am the most ticklish, per ticklish person ever. Almost to the point that I almost get scared to be tickled, but it's still fun and funny and playful and all of that. But I am I'm very ticklish and unfortunately someone's tickled me before and I've actually ended up kicking so hard trying to get away that I've actually hurt them. So I say go in with that with caution if you're ever going to try to tickle me. Let's see. Scuba2252. If a fan recognizes you in public, do you like it if they approach you and ask for a picture? I absolutely love it. It's flattering. I am so flattered, one, that they even recognized me. Um, that means that they've definitely watched a number of my movies, right? And if they want a picture with me, hell yeah. Like, give them something to be proud of and show their friends and... Um, I think it's awesome and it's it's definitely something that makes me feel good because it lets me know that you know people love my work soul underscore asa 551n said what's your favorite quality about yourself and why my favorite quality is my ambition discipline and my thirst for knowledge um, for personal growth business development um, helping others. I'm a humanitarian. That I know that's not just one, but those are kind of my favorite qualities. Um, they've definitely got me where I'm at now, and I'm always striving to be the best that I can possibly be. Dfresh2477 says, why don't you do cream pies in your scenes? I've always known you to do one to date, just curious is all. For me, it's really like a hygiene thing and it is such a personal thing. I don't know, like I feel like if someone comes inside me, like I'm absorbing their DNA, like I'm absorbing, yeah, like I'm absorbing their DNA. So it's kind of like I, I want to make sure that it's a person I have a connection with and I want to make sure they're really clean. Mike Stefano is the one person in the industry that I did that with and anybody that knew anything about him, he was probably the most OZ, OCD hygienic person you could have ever met. Um, his diet was super clean and um, we had a lot of chemistry together in our filming. 
I'm not saying I'm opposed to doing another one. It would just have to be with the right person. I could see myself doing it with maybe Johnny Castle or Johnny Sins. But again, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like now it's been so long, like maybe that's something that I only want to do for my own content now. I'm not sure unless the, I guess unless the price is right and a company really, really wanted me to do it. I, I guess I would just have to cross that bridge when it's there. But for now, that's, that's why I don't do cream pies. Starship Trooper 72 said, what are the chances of you getting Eva Angelina doing a, and, and me to do a scene together again? That would be really hard. Eva's been retired for quite some time, uh, numerous years now. Um, she's moved on to a completely different industry. I love her to pieces. Y'all know she's my best friend. Plus, I don't really need to do a scene with her. Like, I can have her whenever I want. It's just a matter of flying to California or her coming here to Dallas, Texas. And, you know, we always play around when we're together. We're definitely cuddle buddies, but we like to have our playtime and fun too. So, um, I guess I selfishly can have her whenever I want her, so I'm not too worried about trying to get her to do a scene. Um, but the chances are pretty slim to getting her to do another scene. Um, George25301 says, do you have someone special in your life other than my dog? Uh, which is ironic with her sitting in my lap right now. I have lots of special people in my life as far as intimately. No, I don't um, have anyone that I'm intimate with. Um, but I definitely have lots of really, really close friends and mentors and friends and family and all of that and I consider those people very special people in my life that fill any kind of void so far that I think I would get from not having an intimate relationship. Like I said, I'm not looking to rush into anything. I need to make sure it's the right person and quality over quantity. So to answer your question, no, there is not a special person in my life right now. So that pretty much concludes the questions that I saved. There was a lot of repeat questions. So I try to consolidate, you know, some of them kind of were basically asking the same thing. To finish, what is next for episode five? Well, I finally found somebody to help me with coaching me through my podcast and blog that has been in broadcasting for years. We actually spoke yesterday for an extensive period and he is going to be mentoring me on how to make this podcast vlog the best that it can possibly be. I needed help. I was having audio problems, video problems, editing problems. How often should I release it? What what hosting site should it be on? All kinds of stuff. Even just like the outline of the intro, the uh, the outro, you know, all of that stuff. So he's going to help me with all of that. He's also helping me put together um, outlines for you know how to plan out my future episodes and what I'm gonna talk about we have like five or six um, really interesting topics that I know all of y'all at least at some point in time are have been curious about so I definitely think it'll be engaging there's definitely some funny ones in there um, with all of the years I've been in this business uh, there's definitely some interesting and funny experiences I've had so I'm really looking forward to finally having someone mentoring me on that now. So um, I'm not sure which order those five or six um, episodes will kind of go in as far as the topics on them. Um, we're still working that out. So it'll be pretty panned out and figured out more by episode five. As always, please subscribe to my podcast and vlog on uh, my podcast is on iTunes and Google Play. It's called The Rachel Star on YouTube. Um, subscribe to my channel, again, called The Rachel Star. You can also find it, um, all of my most recent things going on on my personal website, which is therachelstar.com. And that finishes this up for now. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I look forward to episode five with you all. Please let me know your feedback on the audio and video. I am actively trying to get this to be the best that it can possibly be. So, till next time, bye.